What is going on everyone? Steve here. Welcome back to another episode. And today we're doing a little trout fishing, winter trout fishing here on a really nice scenic stream, trout stream. Hopefully there's some rainbow trout or some brown trout that'll bite here today. We got the fly rod, probably throw in some nymphs, maybe some woolly buggers towards the end of the day. But hopefully it's a good day and maybe we can find some winter New Jersey trout. We got a nice little hike here down to the river. It's supposed to be around high of 50 degrees here today, so warm enough for the trout hopefully to be active. This winter has been insanely warm though. I just, I can't believe how warm these temperatures have been. Last week we had some days that went into the 60s. So that's gotta have some type of effect on this trout fishing here. We'll be able to find out here shortly. But before we get to the fishing, we get to take this really nice hike out. Oh yeah start to see the water down there now. We're gonna start off with a little nymphing setup here. I'll show you the flies if I catch a fish, but we basically just have a little pheasant tail and a zebra midge on the top. And we're just gonna drift it along the current. There we go. We got a fish on. That didn't take long. Wow, it's a good one. Really good fish. Uh, come on, buddy. Yes. Yes. Really bite. Okay. Oh, by all means. All right, we got the first fish of the day here. Really beautiful rainbow trout on the zebra midge. Wow. Okay. We'll go ahead and hold them up. That's a beautiful trout. Look at that. Good. Someone's filming there on the side. All right, we're gonna let him go. There he goes. Yes. How freaking cool is that? Fishing this little gorge, really good sized trout. Probably one of the best sized trout that I've caught out of this area here. When I went out, I was just out last week on a different river i didn't catch anything but there was a stonefly hatch which was really cool they were, they were all buzzing around winter fishing can be tough though it's definitely not as productive as the spring and the fall but there's definitely a good opportunity and you can't catch anything if you don't get out but that just made that just made the whole day worth it right away oh my god Thought I had another hit. I think it was just a snag. So I caught one at the top of this little run here. And now I'm gonna work the bottom half. I really think this calmer water, the calmer, deeper water is the where it's at here today. Okay, next spot. 
Another good looking pool. This stick is kind of in the way. Let's see if we can get that out of here. There we go. The water definitely has a little tannic look to it. It's clear enough for fish to see though, so it's not like completely dirty. This is just gorgeous. I'm gonna back up here so I can work that middle part of the pool. There we go. All right, guys, I think that's about it. You can see the river way there behind me. This time of year is definitely difficult. The, the bites are pretty few and far between, but if you don't get out there, you can't catch any. And I'm just happy to get that one beautiful rainbow today. So that made it all worth it for me. Hopefully once it starts warming up, we're gonna have a lot more fishing to do. So while we were waiting for the fishing to hopefully heat up soon, I figured I would take this opportunity to show you guys something you can do with your fish scrap and it pretty much allows you to not throw it in the garbage and have less waste. These are all my fluke bones that I caught over the summer, most of them at least, that I tried to save. And you just pop them in the freezer and save them up until you get a decent amount. And then you just make stock with some celery, some garlic, thyme, bay leaves, a little bit of aromatics, and it's a great way to utilize all of your fish scrap. So I'll show you how to do this, but it's fairly simple. We just take all of our bones, I'm gonna put them in the pot. Now we are just gonna fill this up with some water. All right, let's start there. Now we're gonna just cut up our mirepoix here. The carrots, the celery, the onions. You don't really have to go super fine here. It's just stock, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Not really any anything fancy on the onion either. With the garlic, I'll just give it a little smack and then that's, that's really it. Don't even bother peeling it. All right, we're gonna just put those vegetables in. We're gonna add some of that fresh thyme. I also have a few fresh bay leaves. I don't have any peppercorns, but we'll just put a little bit of black pepper in there. I almost forgot just a little splash of white wine also. So now I'm just gonna let this get to a nice simmer. I'm probably gonna let it go for about an hour, give it enough time for all the flavor to release from those fish bones, all the aromatics to really open up. And we have just a nice little stock right there. All right, you can see there that the bones have definitely released all of their flavor now. We're gonna strain this out. Let's see if you could pour it right in there. Start just pulling some of the bones out, trying to get all the liquid out of there. And I am just gonna strain it one more time because I feel like I got some bone in there. Yep. Alrighty. So there you have it. That's the finished product right there. Nice flavorful fish broth. Got a little bit over two quarts, which is a pretty good yield. And at this point, I usually just put the broth in some quarts, stick it in the freezer, and then you're good to go for any recipe that calls for stock. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Hopefully, we get out there real soon, do some more fishing, some more catch and cooks. So if you're new to the channel, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching, everyone. And until next time, I'll see you next time on The Line Cook. Take care, everyone.